Yeah, the year is 2012, and I divided my video into two parts, just like it's 2007 all over again. However, I still have shit to say, so here I go. Now, then The Rock came, and The Rock basically decided that he was going to save Cena, so he beat the Big Show's ass. And this is what I didn't expect. What I didn't expect was for Punk to actually kick The Rock's ass. And he kicked The Rock's ass. He put Cena to shame, man. Just think of Fuck The Rock up. That was really good, because every time I see The Rock nowadays... It looks like he gets asthma when he steps in the ring. He looked like a fucking fish out of water when he got knocked the fuck out, man. That was good. Chris Rock, like, breathes really heavy and he has those beady fish eyes. <sighs> it was pathetic. But he got his ass beat really good. So that, that was fucking awesome. Um, what else? What else? The look on Punk's face says it all, though. Punk looked like he was basically back to his old self. I mean, I thought he was... I kind of expect him to get sick of it being overshadowed by Cena and not being in the main event of pay-per-views, even though he's the one who held the title the longest. And honestly, he gets to retain. That's fucking cool. I like how in I was expecting the punk to show up a lot earlier. Like I was expecting punk to show up and interrupt AJ and Daniel Bryan's wedding, but he showed up afterwards and started dicking out on Daniel Bryan about what happened, still acting like a face. But he was being aggressive and trash talking The Rock, saying, "You're on. You're gonna be the one to face me, and I can't wait." So it shows that Punk still cocky as all hell which in my opinion is a big factor in CM Punk that he doesn't give a fuck he never gave a fuck and that was really fucking good I know you think I'm filling this shit with fluff but this episode of Monday Night Raw it was fucking great it honestly was it got me reinvested into the product. We all thought that this would be a nightmare. We all honestly do. That might come much later when we have three hour episodes that are filled with absolutely nothing. And I'm expecting them to take that hour away from SmackDown. Because 1,000 more years, I mean not 1,000 more years, 1,000 more episodes went to 2000th episode of Raw. Then they can take another hour away from SmackDown and turn SmackDown into an all-dark show. So it won't even be televised anymore. And... And I won't have any reason to tune in on Sci-Fi anymore. Because I don't even watch SmackDown, but when I do, I might find something good. Honestly, I hate SmackDown. Now, this is going to be a tangent, but Hornswoggle pisses me off. Hornswoggle and Santino are the reason I fucking hate the PG era. Or the universe era. If you like if you think that's more correct to say, because the WWE was basically always PG. But, where the older eras, at least Ruthless Aggression and the Attitude Era, basically appealed to angsty teens that are immature and like boobs and penis jokes. This era basically appeals to kids that are... With horrible parents that are eight and nine and will never be able to socialize because they're 
They have to be put on a fucking leash. That's how hyperactive they are. And I don't like it. I don't like these comic relief characters. They're not funny. It wasn't funny that Hornswoggle was the general manager. Nothing Santino ever did make me laugh. And as long as you keep them out of the equation or minimize their value, take that U.S. championship away from Santino, because I know it's not a useful champion. You can't build a legacy off the United States championship. It's not something that will get you a Grand Slam title reign. It's not something that will get you a... Uh, What's the thing when you just have three levels on um, triple crown? But it's not going to get you that, but I just don't like Santino. I don't like Hornswoggle. I don't like these comic relief characters that don't make me laugh at all. And don't have any semblance of badassery. To, and I especially dislike the Funkasaurus. And the Funkasaurus, the first time he actually made me laugh, the first few times he actually did make me laugh because it was such a funny gimmick the first time because you don't expect it. It's so ironic. Because you're expecting this... This Brodus Clay guy, he comes in with this gimmick that he's a destroyer, an untamed animal. Kind of a Brock Lesnar-esque gimmick where he returns to a show that actually matters. But then he comes out as a comic relief character with this really gay gimmick. That honestly made me laugh the first few times. But now it's like, okay, now he's bringing in socially awkward people that aren't even preteens yet and don't know what the beauty of touching a booby is in their case. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I've come out really bitter for some reason, but I did enjoy this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This has been a Minerva Mr. Wonka 7 thing. Suck the dick.